This is something, huh? Oh, yes. Yeah. This is beautiful, huh? Isn't it amazing? Wow. So much. Look at this one. Oh, it's a Gutenberg Bible. What year is this? Yes. Oh, my God. It's wow. Okay. Oh, wow. Nice meeting you. Collection here, Howard. And I, sh I show you here. This is this is a facsimile page here. Uh -huh. They're about twenty thousand dollars if you okay. buy an original. Okay, listen. Let me get your picture. This is Howard, and uh, this this is uh, his Bibles that he uh, I guess collected over the years. Okay, beautiful. This would be a sixteen eleven he. Mm -hmm. This is an original 1611 she. Mm -hmm. uh, that, if you went out to buy one of these, it'd be about up to 20,000. This would mm -hmm. be up to 5,000. Uh -huh. this, this is an original, this is an original 1613. Yeah. Wow, yes. This is a facsimile 
1614. I have an original, I have the whole Bible right over there. Uh, and that's, the, okay, listen. Thank you. This is uh, uh, one that most scholars don't think exists, but the proof is I have an original page over there. I want to see that one, yeah, for sure, yeah. This is a 1617. Mm -hmm. 16, all these dates are important to God. 1617, mm -hmm. Noah's Ark, the flood started on 1617, mm -hmm. uh, on the 17th day of the month. Mm -hmm. The uh, Ark landed on the 17th day of the month. And uh, Jesus rose from the dead on the 17th day of the month. And the year of Jubilee is on the 17th year. Very okay. interesting. This is a 1634. Mm -hmm. 34 means foundation. Mm -hmm. And this is a 1639. The Old Testament is dated 1640. Mm -hmm. uh, 40 years in the wilderness and so forth. Mm -hmm. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 1611 Bibles, which all measure 16 by 11. That's very and interesting. And weigh 16 times 11 ounces. That is very and, interesting. And every page in every one of these Bibles is interchangeable. Every word, every letter is set on the same page of the page. Seven, to, just like the seven spirits of God, mm -hmm. the can, seven uh, candles, or mm -hmm. the seven lamps of God, yeah. uh, the seven eyes of God. Mm -hmm. That's what you have right here. That is fascinating. And this is, uh, represents the dry bones. The letters. dry bones. See, this is dry ink. That's all, the, all these letters are dry bones. Whoa. I, I learned that this week uh, from my friend through a lady in Black uh, Sister, England. She's studying work. And, and when you assimilate these into your into your heart or into your life what happens is god breathes on them and they come alive the flesh comes on the sinews you see that and, yes and the word, I see that. uh the word dry bones what's the difference between dry bones and dry bones it's a spelling Oops. one of the dry bones d-r-y comes out to 1611 mm -hmm. And the other one, D-R-I-E, comes out to 1833 because these are the borders mm -hmm. that God is... So that, that's some kind of a mathematical code? Oh, yeah. It's, it's amazing. Just like the word valley. What, what do you think valley comes out to be? The valley of Babylon, 1611. Now, when it, David fought Goliath and he became a champion... Mm -hmm. And it uses the word champion, I O N on the end. Mm -hmm. That comes out to 1611. Valley, on the other hand, Valley of Dry Bones comes out. The word valley means champion, C H A P I T I A N. And I A N, the word champion, I A N, comes out to 1833. That's amazing. You know, I, I, I remember uh, reading, there's a book called The Bible Code, but this that seems, book, a, that book this is seems a, a decoy. That seems like a different uh, coding in there, right? They're I, giving you something so that you'll never figure out the real code. <laughs> in fact, there's a guy well, that wrote about that or talked on that. How did you ever figure out this code? It was downloaded to me by the Holy Ghost. So you got it through the Spirit? Yeah, through the Holy Ghost. Through the Spirit, yeah. Okay. Is, you know what that is? That's really a truth algorithm, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Look, look at here. You've never seen it. What do you think this is? It looks like a really old Bible to me. No, it's not even a Bible. Not even a Bible. See? What is it? This is an 800-year-old hymn book. Whoa. Look at that. Touch, touch that. That's lambskin. Oh, my goodness. 800-year-old hymn book. That's incredible. Isn't that amazing? There's, there's paper. This is paper part. Because back then, and, in the old days, they didn't have hymn books for everybody, so one guy would stand up and hold it and turn the page. Oh, my goodness. And this is the music. What, what's, okay, what, is there a hymn in there that everybody would know? Well, I, I don't know. Like, this, is, like, this is Latin, so and I don't 
Okay. I don't read Latin that well. Yeah. So, so this is a Latin hymn book. Yeah. Let, let me show you this over here. What, what do do? So we are getting we're getting this uh, tour of this uh, King James Bible Museum that's just opening today by Howard, who has set, collected these things over what Howard Ye what? years Ye years 30, 40 years. 30, 40 years. Look, look at, at here. look at this. This is one of the rarest title pages in existence. This is an original, 1614. Okay, that the scholars say don't don't exist. Is that right? Yeah. And this is the original? This is the original. And, and here it is right here. Yeah, this is the whole So something book. that doesn't exist is right in front of us. Yeah. Now this is probably originally taken from a 59-line folio. You can see this mm -hmm. has been... Uh, and and so what is, what's this Bible? Is this, this one here, it looks so very... This is a 1611. This is a 1611 King James Bible. Wow. And is that King James right there? Yeah. Here's an original title page from another 1611 Bible. Uh -huh. I think this one used to belong to Jerry Falwell. Okay. Uh, and the, the, oh, this is 1611 too. Yeah, that's another 1611. And, and this the, is a 1611 as well? Yeah, these are all 1611. All 1611. So this table. Yeah, we're going to, we eventually want to have. Hey, uh, uh, don't, don't tell me this is real gold. No. No. <laughs> That's why if you still, symbolic. Yeah. Symbolic, okay. This is a 1611 he. You can see somebody has chopped it when they bound it. They didn't understand you're supposed to leave. This is this You is, mentioned the he and she Bible. What's uh, what's the story what's the story about that? This is the he. Yeah, but what is the he and she Bible? I don't think Well, you're gonna have have children, you gotta have a male and a female. Okay. The image of God is male and female. Okay. These two together make the image of God. All right. Now, if you take and now I've taken the He Bible and the She Bible, mm -hmm. I, I've read through the New Testament side by side okay. to see the differences in in this in the Old English. Yeah, yeah. In the Old English. Yeah, you got to have the Old English. Old, okay. That's where you learn. Okay. You, you don't start real learning till you get into the Old English. That's very interesting. Yeah, and and, and you'll have like He will be spelled with say. H E E in the He Bible, the She Bible will be spelled H E or vice versa. Mm -hmm. uh, the word kingdom in, in uh, Luke uh, seventeen twenty one, I believe it is. Kingdom in here will be with seven letters. Kingdom in here will be with eight letters. Is that that's just fascinating? Seven and eight is what? Fifteen. Fifteen. How many letters in Lord Jesus Christ? Fifteen. 15. How many? What's the prime number of the tabernacle? Fifteen. Well, you know, you know, you know. Let me let me tell you something. You remember in in the Bible the the, the woe, woe, and woe. You know, woe. The woe. There's woe, like this. Right. Woe, right? Right. This is a big woe. Yeah. You know. And then when you uh, and you have all these different spellings, all the way through the New Testament, you get to the Book of Revelation, and there are about. 8, 10, 12 chapters where every letter is identical. It's like the husband and wife got their marriage together. Now, isn't that something? No, How it's not. No, it's not something. It's fascinating. Yeah, this is amazing. Yeah. 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 And when I saw that, and I'm, I still haven't done the Apocrypha yet, I still haven't done the Old Testament. Now, the, now these, these old King James 1611 Bibles contain the Apocrypha, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, they all do. Yeah. And, and, and these were pulpit Bibles. So we don't know how many sermons and how many people are in heaven because of that book. Yeah. And you know, I, I heard the Here's King... Here's another one, look at here. Yeah. Look, look at the condition of this one. That's that a 1611, is, my, 1640. It, it seems like you can't even hardly open that. It's oh yeah, we, we can open the, it if you want. The page, no, no, I mean, it seems like it's... But the, the thing is, I love these ones in this condition because it shows they've been read and read and reread. And oh, out of over yeah, and over exactly. Again. Hey, let me ask you this. I understand when King James uh, declared that this is going to be the official Bible of England in uh, 1611 or before that. But is it true that he provided a reader because most of the people couldn't read at that time? 
He provided the reader in every church? Well, I don't know if he yeah. did it, but they would have readers there. And then uh, during the week, they would a lot of times chain the Bible to the pulpit. And then the reader would read it. Chain it? Yeah. They call them the chain Bible. Especially the sixteen. Why chain? Grade. Was there a reason for chaining? Well, just... uh, a lot of times the cathedral would be... Oh, they didn't want it to be sold or something? So someone wouldn't steal it. I got But you. they allowed people to come in there and read it. Mm -hmm. Page okay. through it. Okay. So... This collection in here is over 30, 40 years, but I understand that you have another huge collection that's still in Texas, Texas right? Yeah. Yes. And the plan is to, at, at some point, to get a get a bigger building and bring them all here? Well, the plan is to bring most of them here, but the plan is also maybe to pick up a few more Bibles and to have that museum available in Texas. Okay. For people right. that are in that part of the country. Okay. Here's a very important page. This is a uh, 1663 Algonquin Indian. This is the first, uh, this this came out of the first Bible printed in America. Well, that's another woe, huh? Yeah. Yes. And see all here? This is all the early Bibles printed in America are in here. A single wait, wait, is that big? This no, no, no. These, oh, oh, in, these in are, this, in here. Uh, yeah, they're inside. There's four. There's four uh, boxes here, okay. full of Bible pages, just like this. Oh, I got set you. Up just like this. I got you. Now this could fill this whole room, mm -hmm. and when we get enough museum space, that's what we're going to do. I got gotcha. you. And what is uh, what are these Bibles here, Howard, over in this table? So, Caden, Levi... Uh, this is Drew. a... Uh, uh, this is a... Caden, Levi, Drew... 1613. 13. It's a 72-line folio. Okay. You notice it's the same Okay, now, size now let me ask this. Let me, you mentioned 72-line. Is it 72... These are all 72 lines from the top to the bottom? Yeah. Now, some of them don't have complete, but the general page will have... If you count the lines, it'll be 72. Gotcha. Seven plus two is nine, which is the sum of 1611. Okay. This is what I've dubbed the poor church Bible, because churches that couldn't afford the big thick, because this paper- uh, That's a thinner the, paper? No, no, uh, it's the same paper, but the, the, the workmanship to make a page mm -hmm. and to size it, uh, because this is made out of cloth, old cloth. Old cloth, okay. And, and so, uh, if it gets damaged, we can squirt water on it and iron it just like the iron clothes. Mm -hmm. And I've yes. done that. But uh, that's that's why you have that there. And you got some Bibles over there that are on that other table that are pretty. You see those two Bibles over there? They're pretty big. Um, yeah, that's the Bishop of those two big ones is the Bishop of London. This was. Uh, you, you Bishop, is it, was his name Tungstall, or what was his? Well, that, that's an older one, but this is... Uh, yeah, why not? Uh, yeah, absolutely. They had a fire in the... Uh, this is a story. I don't know if it's all exactly right, mm -hmm. but um, the Bishop of London's Bible was displayed at Buckingham Palace in, in the chapel. They okay. had a fire in the chapel. Mm -hmm. They removed all the books so they wouldn't get damaged. Mm -hmm. Somehow this made it to one of the biggest collectors in the world, and it never got back, and I was able to purchase it from. So this that, has genealogy in it going back to 1200s. Well, that's a. That's, so this is a Bishop Gibbons, I believe. His, this. See, look at the binding here. Mm -hmm. Special leather, special everything. This is part of the. It's three volume set. This is scripture. This is the Book of Common Prayer. And uh, I don't know if this one is the one. So that's it, this is interesting. Edmund Gibbons. Yeah. Uh, the Bishop Bishop of London. Is this this is is it, it, this is Proverbs, right? Is this just a? Well, this is this is the second volume. Uh, or, yeah. This is. is it, wait, let's see, let's, let's see. Wow. And then, then I see. Okay, yeah. And this is uh, first volume. I got gotcha. you. And okay. then this is the Catechism or uh, Book of Common Prayer. They're okay. all bound to match. It's a beautiful set. So all all of these Bibles make one 
Uh, this is this is one Bible. This is the Book of Common Prayer. I got gotcha. you. So these two make the one Bible, and this yeah. is a. And what's the difference with the Book of Common Prayer? What is that? Uh, well, this is uh, to teach for in the Church of England. They uh, they had different scri scriptures to read for different Sundays. So this is kind of like a catechism for the churches for the pastors. Okay. All right. And what is this thing with the, what's this? Oh, this is a smuggler's Bible. Ah. Uh -huh. So you, you put your goods in there, and then you put it like this. Oh, it's a fake Bible. Nobody, yeah. Well, it was a real Bible at one time. They just uh, cut it out. I got gotcha. you. Interesting. And this looks, I mean, I don't, this is another... Uh, oh, this is a really a rare piece here. This is, I think this is the one. I, I got so many, I, I can't always remember. No, uh, oh, this is the, the first small folio of the six of the sixteen eleven. So a, this was a, a 16, smaller size. This is sixteen sixteen. So this is a smaller size to make it more convenient to well, read. Well, for I a suppose. preacher could carry it. From yeah, church to yeah. church. Now, I understand that these big Bibles could be like 30 pounds, the bigger ones. Uh, uh, the original big 1611 weighed 16 pounds. 16 enough. pounds, okay. But if you if you get them on, uh, then when you get the binding, see, this is a very heavy binding. The binding can weigh. That's yeah. 16 pounds, 11 ounces without the binding. This is one of my favorite. This is a... 1613. That's my own binding job. That's your own binding? Yeah, it was all falling apart when I okay. got it. I had a guy off me 8,000 for it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's worth more than that now. But, uh, well, I th you, you're talking about worth. I think this is this, this is, is kind of priceless because I don't know if you oh, could yeah. replace any no, of this stuff, can't. right? Th this is the the largest physical 1613 13 I've ever found. This is an incredible piece. I love this one. I love them all. Yeah, they're just, uh, they're really irreplaceable. Yeah, they are. You know? And uh, hopefully Gary wants to build a place we'll have maybe uh, 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 20,000 square feet mm -hmm. where we can properly display them and properly describe them. See, mm -hmm. here they're so crowded. And I've got a bunch of them over in my house because we just didn't have room for them. Yeah, Gary told me that in Texas you have not only a lot, many more King James Bibles, but you also have a huge collection of other old books. Yeah, I have a huge collection. Like thousands? thousands he said there's thousands. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you got... <laughs> you have to be one of the largest collectors of... Uh, I, I the King James Bible and all these old, you, the, these thousands of other books, they're kind of uh, just antique books. I mean. Yeah, yeah, oh, you get a lot of antique books. Wow, okay. Yeah, see, uh, if we get a big <clears throat> building, we could display them. Then we have, I have all the books printed in America from 1639 to 1800. Wait a minute, wait a minute. All the books printed in America from? 1639 to 1800. So that's that's another, that's a whoa, whoa. Yeah. Right? Now those uh, are on micro print, mm -hmm. which is a, a card. You'll have like a hundred pages on the card. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Antiquarium Society put that together and I was able to, they were going to landfill, uh, bury it in a landfill so people couldn't get it so they could put it on uh, microfilm so they could control it. Mm -hmm. that last about 40 years now they got it on computer and mm -hmm. the, that's a, a nice thing because you can look things up but it's also a dangerous thing because you can go in and change things yeah yeah and mm -hmm. they were going to landfill it all and i talked the vice president out of it and he sold me basically i set up 45 libraries around the country that's that that's stuff. fascinating yeah. over the years right yeah yeah, yeah. okay well, I guess uh, we're going to have a tour now yeah, from uh, tour, so from Gary. Yeah. Right? Okay. Let's. Uh, hey, um, Howard, thank you for your brief little explanation and tour of the. This is the grand opening. What? 
uh, of the King James Bible Museum here in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. This is September 30th, 2023. Huge event, huge event. Thank you, Howard.